Hi, my name is Emily. I'm a faithful follower of Christ, and this is Carnivlog, Carnivlog number six. So for you and or my future self, I'm making this vlog to just share my experience going carnivore. Today's vlog is cravings, social life, and OMAD psychology. April 30th. I had Burger King, bacon and eggs. I'm noticing we're more social. No sugar is so much easier to navigate than some sugar, especially socially. I want to remember how lost I felt mid-February when I could tell I had gained 30-ish pounds back but didn't know what to do. I wasn't eating sugar or flour but absolutely 100% still struggling with my diet. I started macros and God showed me that I was still dealing with sugar addiction. Now the struggle is literally as minimal and simple as an occasional split second thought of I miss movie popcorn, or those fried pies look good, not even in the same ballpark of the turmoil I was in over what and how much to eat. 8.45 p.m. I'm hungry for a bagel with cream cheese. I'll go to bed. This BBBE one to two meals inside a six hour window challenge is a challenge. May 2nd, 2022, OMAD, one meal a day. Just don't want to deal with eating again, pizza and two ball games, pizza for the kids and two ball games later. I'm hungry, or maybe I should say more specific. Maybe I should be more specific. I keep thinking about food. Maybe that's because I worked physically harder than usual yesterday, or maybe it's because I didn't sleep much last night. This is probably a combination of hunger and exhaustion desperate for energy, but I'm determined to complete this BBBE challenge, which includes an 18 hour fast. I ate dinner last night at 7.30 PM, which means I don't get to eat again until two-ish today. And I can do this for 30 days and maybe longer. PS, wow, just to write that out, I eat dinner late. 7.30 is now late and there's no mention of binging. There's been a huge shift in my MO recently, and I'm loving it. Fascinated, really. Sundown, energy down, grilling up, time for bed. Okay, so here is my carnivlog number six. Cravings, social life, and OMAD psychology. Cravings. They come and they go very quickly lately, but they have been popping up a couple times. I notice in the evenings when I'm tired, um... My circadian rhythm is amazing lately and on point. I like cannot stay up past, definitely not past 9.30, maybe 8.30. I start sleeping. I sleep so well. And then I wake up and hop up and get going. I'm sleeping sound, soundly. I'm sleeping for a long time. I'm getting eight or nine hours of sleep and I wake up refreshed, but Uh, the flip side of that is that the energy I now get, which is such good energy, runs out at night. So I have to start the whole thing over again. It is, it's a rhythm. I'm in a good cycle. Um, and I need to be respectful of that, meaning I don't want to push it. I cannot feel so good in the morning if I push that boundary at night. So I'm letting my brain do its thing and following its lead. Um, late at night when my husband wants to watch a show or something, I'm like, typically I'm like, I can't, I cannot stay awake. So I go to sleep. Um, 
the cravings typically creep in in that 30 minutes to an hour before my room is a little messy, but look, that bed is made. Hallelujah. That's my May printable goal. Make that bed every morning. Um, typically about an hour before I go to bed. It's no coincidence. It's right when the melatonin is starting to like creep into my brain and, and um, I'm starting to get sleepy. And that usually happens at the ballpark. The sun's starting to go down. I'm starting to get sleepy and all of a sudden carbs look good and sound good. So lately when I say I'm hungry for, that's my first clue. That's my first clue. If I'm hungry, I'm hungry. If I'm hungry for a bagel with cream cheese, I'm not really hungry. That's a carb craving. If I'm hungry for some cookies and ice cream, that's not hunger. That's a craving. When I'm hungry, I'm hungry for red meat. I want some, I want some food. I want some meat. Um, I watched a YouTube video an hour ago on how to make a delicious chuck roast in the crock pot. I'm going to go get that started. Um, I am not starving right now at all. I don't know when I'll break this fast. I haven't eaten since yesterday at, this was yesterday. I use this journal to write my meals and then what time my DDD is. So meal one was at 9.30, two burgers and some bacon. Meal two was at 2.30, one pound of ground beef, two eggs, and some taco seasoning. I did my daily done declaration at 3.30 p.m. Add 18 hours to that. I could eat at 9.30 this morning if I wanted. This is going great. My energy is up. I'm loving it. Um, I don't know when I'm going to break the fast. I have contractors here right now, our contractor, um, laying hardwood floor upstairs. The AT&T guy is outside figuring out where he's going to bury the line. I've got a guy coming to fix my refrigerator. Um, the dogs are at the groomers. The kids are at school. We have a lot going on. <laughs> and I have a really, really dirty kitchen to clean. So anyways, I don't know when I'm going to break the fast. I'm not worried about it. I don't feel hungry. Late last night, that grilling kicked in and I started, you'll see this on my photo food diary Come that'll come out tomorrow. Um, I have really started thinking about carbs at the park. It's when I start to get tired and it's when the sun starts to go down. And honestly, that's a really good indication. That's a good indicator that things are working well because ghrelin, G-H-R-E-L-I-N, is a hunger hormone that kicks in typically in the evenings, especially for women and causes us to crave carbs. So that we'll stuff ourselves and go to bed and not starve to death. We'll stuff ourselves and go to bed and gain weight so that we don't starve to death. For most of us, that's not a concern. So yes, I get cravings, but they are so fleeting. And like I, the reason I read May 30th and, uh, no, April 30th and May 2nd in, in this journal is because I wanted to share that sometime in February when I was, um, no longer weighing and measuring and um, following very rigidly the program that I've been following, my weight was creeping up, which is fine. I was hungry. And that one size fits all did not fit me. I was so hungry by the time I'd lost 100 pounds and I looked and felt frail. I wanted to see some collarbones. I saw some sternum and some ribs too skinny, too frail, too thin for this farming mama. So anyways, I was glad to eat my way back up uh, a few pounds. Um, but things just still felt out of whack. Even though I started counting macros, um, I was so concerned throughout the day, just so wanting those carbs. Just um, avocados, Ezekiel bread, and bananas, and peanut butter. Um, anyways, I was just struggling in February. I am not struggling now. It doesn't compare. These little fleeting carb moments where I think, that cookie looks good. Or I was at a, a barbecue place with Greg the other day. You'll see these pictures on my photo food diary tomorrow. And when I went to the bathroom, I, walk, I walked past the countertop and they had fried pies sitting out. And I thought, 
I bet those taste good. It's so fleeting and it doesn't, it just doesn't compare. Um, okay, here's an analogy that comes to mind. It's like, it's like having a really nice pair of tennis shoes and you can walk and get somewhere and then someone hands you a brand new car, any car, any truck, any vehicle. The progress you're making with this new vehicle, where you're able to go, how you're able to move, how you're able to function. Um, it's like every once in a while being tempted to buy the new latest pair of shoes. It doesn't even compare. I don't need those shoes. I am able to operate now in a way I've never been able to operate freely. I am more free than ever. I feel for the first time actually free from sugar and flour because I'm not consuming any carbohydrates. Not all, I am not saying you all need to do this. I'm not saying anyone else needs to do this. I'm saying for me and my brain, this is the extent I'm willing to go to to experience the freedom I'm experiencing. Throughout the day, I am fine. I'm not hungry. And when I am, it's so good and delicious. And I eat um, beef, butter, bacon, and eggs for the next 30 days. And it is so yummy. And then I'm well fueled. These cravings only creep in in the evenings and it's growing. I know it. So... They're fleeting, um, it's just a moment. And like I said, struggling with them is like nothing. It's like, it takes as much effort as like telling my brain, I don't think so, no. Versus, like I said in my journal, the turmoil that I was in in February, like, uh, it. look, I'm wearing jeans again, okay? In February, these tops were so tight. Uh, I get these little $3 tops. They are Bella Canvas, soft feel. They have a long skinny tag. Bella Canvas, soft feel from JiffyShirts.com. I get them for about $3.46 a piece. Um, it's my staple. It's like my uniform every day. And I just buy a whole bunch of them. Um, these are size mediums. In February, these jeans didn't fit very well. These mediums were too tight to wear out in public. And I was like, oh, should I ne buy the next size up? And uh, Greg encouraged me not to because, well, I'm just glad he encouraged me not to because right around the corner was this carnivore life. And um, obviously, and I'm not weighing right now, but obviously things just are so much better so much more comfortable and again I feel free so struggling through a fleeting thought of those fried pies look good or Greg and I were on a date the other day and it was in the middle of the day and I said hey Greg isn't this kind of funny we go on a date at sort of different times now with the kids in school whenever we can you know squeeze a little date in and just the word date made me think of the movies and the movies made me think of popcorn so for a moment a split second I started thinking about movie theater popcorn and it took me another split second to quit thinking about movie theater popcorn and enjoy the two ribeyes and four slices of extra crispy bacon that were in front of me. Not to mention the man that was in front of me at that restaurant. Um, versus February, just feeling, you know what I'm talking about. You know, we talked about this. I won't name names, but I was emailing with one of you recently or Marco polling with one of you just about how desperate we feel at times, how lost we feel at times. Because truly, while our eating is not the main event, there's a whole lot more to a road trip than the gas station, am I right? If we don't know what gas station to go to or we can't find, we haven't found the right one, it can be a very big deal. Once we get it figured out, it's not a big deal. But until then, it can be a very big deal because it's how we fuel ourselves. 
social life. I am finding that I am so much more comfortable and confident in social situations because before, and I know a lot of you can relate to this, I was getting ready to go out to eat. Okay, here we go. So many forks in the road. The first fork in the road mentally is, am I going to stick to my plan or am I going to take the night off? That can be the only fork in the road if you decide to take the night off, but if you decide to stick to the plan, okay, well, am I going to stick to it completely? Look, back in the day, am I going to actually weigh a measure? Am I going to bring the scale in? Am I going to, am I going to get 14 ounces of those not so great vegetables from the restaurant we're going to? Am I going to stick to it exactly? Or am I just going to do the one plate rule? Or am I, am I going to stick to it exactly and not get sugar and flour, but still allow myself rice and beans? Am I not going to have flour, but will I have grain, even though it's dinner and I should only really technically have a grain at breakfast? So many forks in the road. I know you know what I'm talking about. What about cheese? Should I, am I going to count that cheese? Am I going to, am I going to let myself no flour, but what about corn flour? Could I have tortillas, tortilla chips? I'll just do the corn chips. It is so much so much. When I was preaching at that church nearby, a couple at the church wanted to take Greg and I out. So they did. They took us out to a Mexican restaurant and I told Greg on the way in, I said, I'm just going to eat like a normal person. Okay. Shh. It's our little secret. <laughs> I went in there and got myself a Sprite and I was kind of winking with him. Now these people were like wanting me to be the pastor of this church. They were, we were sort of having a meeting, um, to talk about the future of this church so I was like oh this will not be our last encounter if I drink sugar in front of them and if I eat flour tortillas in front of them but then someday I weave in my testimony about getting off sugar and flour and being addicted then how will they remember this and will they question well why did she not that most people care I love the quote uh, we wouldn't care so much about what other people thought about us if we knew how seldom they did not that they're even thinking about it but I was, I thought I'm going to go in there and drink a Sprite and order a burrito like a normal person. Just have some chips and cheese dip like a normal person. But I didn't feel at all normal. I sat there drinking that Sprite, kind of enjoying it, nibbling on my burrito. You know, like on a first date when you eat salad and try to convince your future spouse that you're a lady. I am a lady, a totally different kind of lady. I'm a farm lady and I eat. I like to eat. So here I was at this meal with them thinking... This is going to be awkward if we go out again, because today I'm taking the day off, but what if we go out again and I'm on? And all of a sudden I'm like, I don't eat sugar and I don't eat flour. And they're like, but you did last time. It was a whole thing. When we left there, I had been white knuckling, even though I got the Sprite and even though I got the burrito with the white flour tortilla, I was white knuckling. I was just kind of nibbling, just kind of enjoying the conversation and... Enjoying the fellowship, but the whole time, my brain was kind of like holding back, holding back, because I was engaged in what I'm addicted to. It'd be like cocaine or heroin, somebody saying, in front of other people, I'm just going to have a little. We left there. I had Greg take me to a gas station. I walked in and got six or seven of anything I wanted. It was on. Rice Krispie Treats muffins, donuts, soda, little monkey munch, like checks covered in peanut butter and powdered sugar. We went from the gas station. I was gobbling that up too because it was on. It had, st this binge had started at the restaurant and at the restaurant I was kind of holding back. We left the gas station and we went to Walmart and I was feeling sick from all the sugar, you think? So I thought, I know what I need to settle my stomach. Greg went in Walmart. I went in behind him. Went to the deli, got fried chicken and fried potatoes. The batter from the chicken, all that flour, the starch from those potatoes. This is my freedom. I feel so much more comfortable and confident in social situations now, not trying to find that arbitrary line. 
Where do I draw the line? Do I draw it at refried beans and rice and tortilla chips and cheese dip? Do I draw it at Sprite and ice cream and Dairy Queen on the way home? Do I draw it at gas station stuff or Walmart binges or, or, or do I draw it much sooner and say, measured out, I'm going to cling to the scale and it's going to be where I draw the line. There's no more of that now. I drew the line and it's at all carbohydrates because carbohydrates break down two ways. They're either complex or simple. Complex fruits and vegetables. Simple, just pure sugar. Everything that starts with C, Coke, candy, cake, chocolate, cookies, all that. But even the complex carbohydrates eventually break down as sugars. Our brain eventually, our body is eventually running off sugar. Yes, there's more processes. Yes, there's more fiber. Yes, there's more digesting than syrup and Coke and sugar and simple sugars, simple carbohydrates. But even starchy vegetables, these all break down as sugars. And I'm not telling you to get off them. I'm just sharing that that's how addicted I am. That if I get off Snickers, then I will, and I have, my addiction wants what it wants. And if it's not going to get it from Snickers and Sprite and ice cream and blizzards and chocolate mixed with peanut butter, it will get what it wants from bananas and peanut butter and avocados and the list goes on of complex carbohydrates. Now that I have drawn the line, macros, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Now that I've drawn the line right there and I just kick carbohydrates out completely, I am experiencing a confidence now, like especially in social situations, because I'm not sitting there stewing. Like, how am I going to navigate this social situation? Am I going to stick to it completely? Or am I going to do some infinite number of variations that more often than not are going to lead to completely falling off track. So now Greg and I, and we're a team and that's wonderful, we go into restaurants and we just let them know right up front, all we want is animal products. All we want is the meat. So what's the best way? What's the cheapest way? What's the most um, economically um, efficient way to make that happen. Normally we have to pay full price for a sandwich, which is fine. We just get the meat, but that's how simple it is. I am, um, I'm finding a simplicity in social situations of just saying no carbs instead of either less carbs or ironically, sometimes I might cut out the simple sugars and end up eating more carbs because they're complex. Just going a little crazy on white rice or noodles or the list goes on and on. This feels like a fit. It feels easy. It feels breezy. And I feel much more confident in social situations. I am not walking into it with my will, my willpower already depleting from the nearly infinite, if not abundant, forks in the road. Am I going to stay on track or am I going to go off? And if I go off, where am I going to draw the line? The line's been drawn and it's nothing but a relief. OMAD, um, one meal a day, psychology. Um, I'm finding that it works really, really well for me to tell myself for this 30 day challenge that I'm going to have two meals a day. And then if I eat my first one and don't want my second one, perfect. If I went into it saying, I'm just going to have one meal a day, I might do like my friend said and overdo it on that meal binge knowing this is the only time I'm going to eat today. I better get it all in. 
I'm going to be interested when I go back and see over these 30 days how many days were OMADs because it's more than I would have thought. It's very interesting to me. It's not my goal. I'm not trying to eat less or less frequently. I want to eat enough to be full, enough to be fueled, um, and eat as often as I need to. But it's so interesting to me how often lately eating once a day is plenty. But again, the psychology there is that if I had set it up and said, I'm only going to eat once a day, I might have struggled. But since I say twice a day, and then I let myself eat that first meal and go from there, um, there's been lots of days where I just had one meal and it was plenty. So that's it on carnivlog number six, carnivlog number five. I talk about the energy that I now have and um, that is now consistent um, over the past several days. Um, this morning I was up, well, my alarm clock went off and then I just got up, got going. Um, again, my battery runs out. I sleep for a long time. I'm back to a hundred percent, but I want to, um, I want to reinforce this new circadian rhythm of mine and I can reinforce that by actually going to bed at night when my body's starting to tell me, okay, we're about out of energy, right? For a long time with newborn babies, going to bed was not an option. If you have little ones and going to bed's not an option, just pamper yourself. Maybe when you get to that point, you have a cutoff on your day and you say, all right, I can't go to bed and fall asleep, but I'm done. I'm going to leave as much as I can for tomorrow. I'm going to prioritize um, anything living around here. If it's alive, I'll take care of it. If it's not, it can wait till tomorrow. But just be so gracious and kind and pamper yourself. If you can't go to sleep, at least um, let yourself off the hook and start resting. Exodus 33, 14, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. We don't have to be in that bed sleeping to get rest. We can start to get rest physically, mentally, and emotionally, and spiritually, even while we're awake. So just be gracious and kind with yourself. And when you can tell that your battery is starting to go down at night, don't do what I did. Or do it. Maybe you need to do it to experience it. I don't know. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but for about two decades, I forced myself to keep going using sugar and flour. That's how I became an accidental addict. I did not fuel my body. I forced it. And um, so often what our body needs is rest. It needs a good night's sleep whenever that can begin. So um, that's it. This is going really, really well. I am on BBBE day 14. So this completes, today will complete two weeks of nothing but beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. I'm on day 17 of 100 days, and my husband and I are dedicating the next 15 days to a certain person in our life without letting them know. We're just doing this. This, in a lot of ways, is a form of fasting, and um, it is really good to not give in to temptation, but it's also really good to not give in to temptation for a variety of really good reasons. So we are dedicating yesterday and then the next 14 days to a certain person in our life. And when we feel tempted, we are going to be all the more motivated to fight that temptation for them because we want to be good examples for the people around us and um, model behaviors that, that we think would benefit um, other people. But like I've said many times and from the beginning, one of the best things we can do for other people is take excellent care of ourselves. So let's do just that. I love you dearly. We'll talk again soon. Bye.